everybody, and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog, and Ryan is back because it's time to talk about our favorite reads of the year. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you. I'm so excited. We're halfway through, uh, which I can't believe, but it's been a good reading year so far, so excited to talk about these books. Yes, I cannot believe that 2023 is like half over. That seems ridiculous to me. Um, and we're entering into July. So yeah, but I agree. It's been a good book year. Yeah, it's been really good so far. Yeah. Well, so Ryan and I are here today. We've each brought three books with us that we're going to talk about. But we wanted to start with this. Our favorite read collectively this year has been The Late Americans by Brandon Taylor, a book we both loved very, very, very much. Um, however, we did a whole entire long video on it, so we're not going to talk about it today, but I will link that video down below if you would like to hear us talk about our favorite read of the year so far, um, because we did love it. We very much loved it. Yeah, number one book of the year so far. It'll be tough to beat, but it'll be interesting to see going into this fall, which has some big hitters coming in, so... A hundred percent. So what uh, Ryan and I have done, we've each brought three books. We'll rotate back and forth um, and no particular order, just three books that really have stood out for us this year. Um, and so you'll have, by the end of this, at least seven titles to add to your TBR. So I think that's fair and uh, full of good reads, hopefully. So Ryan, do you want to kick us off with your first book? Sure. Uh, the first book I chose was Brother and Sister Enter the Forest. Uh, this is a book from Catapult that came out earlier this year. Um, this book is about a brother and sister. And Christopher Bolin in, uh, reviewed the book for the New York Times. And he talked about how like, there isn't a lot of literature about brothers and sisters. There's brothers and sisters, but not brother and sister. And so this was kind of an interesting book from that angle. Um, the brother is Justin and the sister is Willa in this book. Justin's had a rough life. He's in his 30s. He struggles with alcoholism. He's gay. And it's just been kind of difficult for him. Uh, his sister lives alone, has kind of weird relationships that aren't exactly the healthiest. Um, and one day, Justin shows up at Willa's door asking for help to stay with her. We then learn more about Willa's, or Justin's past, and how, you know, some trauma that really happened to him um, that was very heavy. Yes. Like traumatic. <laughs> it, yes, capital T traumatic. Um, affected his life and you understand where he come, came from and why he has the relationships he does. But then you also see Willa's side of that, dealing with that trauma, and she deals with it by creating these miniature dioramas, um, recreating some of these scenes from Justin's life. I thought it was fascinating, really well written, unlike anything I've read before. I really liked it. Yes. Um, uh, Ryan, can you tell us the name of the author? It's Richard Mirabella. Richard Mirabella. Um, this was number four on my list. So I'm so glad it's on your list because I too love this book, but I will say it got very dark and I was, <laughs> I was not quite thinking it was going to go there, but it does. So it definitely has some stuff that is traumatic is a good word. <laughs> but it was a new voice. Like it was something I hadn't read before and I totally agree with you, right. really good. Really good. I mean, Richard Mirabella is a debut author. This is his first novel. He's not like a professional. I don't think he went to MFA school. I think he wrote this in his spare time. Shockingly good for a first yeah. novel and didn't feel like it had first novel syndrome where everything but the kitchen sink is thrown in. It was really idiosyncratic, really nuanced. It left things out in a way that was surprising. And, but then it still told a whole story about these two people, which I really liked. Yeah. 
And the relationship that uh, Justin has with his mother is also very fascinating and was so real to me. Like it had such a sense of, of being something that I've seen or I know people that have had that situation or, and um, yeah. So it was like this book that I just didn't expect to be as real as it was. Like I really felt it. Yeah. Yeah, an amazing, an amazing book. And you know, Catapult is one of those smaller presses. They put out so many good books. Yeah, they really do. They're, they pick some great stuff and they find some gems that this, he might not have been published by one of the, like the bigger presses, but this was excellent. Excellent. I totally, totally agree. So, well, my first book is a book that probably needs no inject, uh, introduction because it was picked by Read by Jenna, or Read with Jenna. So it definitely got its name out there. But that is Chain Gang All-Stars by Nana Kwame Adige Brenna. And this is out from Pantheon here in the US. Um, if I could just ask publishers not to put stickers now on in the actual printed covers so you can't take them off. It drives me crazy. Uh, at least give us an option of not getting. I mean, I under, I think it's great. Like Jenna's telling us what to read and is getting some voices out there and getting some publicity. But I wish I could opt in for just the flap without the sticker. Absolutely. Like in, in five years, are we going to want to know this was a read by Jenna Pick? No, because we're just going to be in awe of a DJ brand now. Uh, absolutely. So this book is set sort of like in a not too distant future where the penal system is changed and a program called CAPE, Criminal Action Penal Entertainment, has created sort of the gladiator fighting um, system where you uh, are asked as a person who has committed some crime that you can join. And if you win a certain amount of fights, at the end of it, you are released from prison. And our two main characters are Loretta Thor, Thorar, I cannot say this word, T-H-U-R-W-A-R. The R and the W together, my tongue twists, but Thorar. And um, Hammer Hurricane Stacks Stacker. Um, they are two women that are like at the highest level. They have like the most kills. They're at the upper echelon. Um, uh, Loretta is very close to being let out. And this book is about not only this system, it's told from so many different points of view of people looking at this gladiator system, from the people inside, from the people who protested as too violent, to the fans who live for it, like WWE wrestling, um, and people who become obsessed with these characters. Um, but at the heart of this book, and this is where I think um, the author does the most amazing, amazing thing, this is a love story between these two women. They are in a relationship and they are headed um, towards one of them possibly being released if she can win. Um, and they have like this legacy with them and it is compelling and dark and violent and utterly romantic at times, which is so strange. But you learn about the history of this program, which is very much a commentary on the prison system in the United States hands down, uh, but it's also just like, there's a bit of tongue in cheek, very black, dark humor in it. And um, it's just so, so good, but so much more than you, you think it's just like this gladiator novel of prisoners fighting each other to death. It is so much more than that. If you've read his short story collection, Black Friday, he is like, to me, he's like one of the best authors writing in sort of this weird, dystopian social commentary style, um, you'll turn the pages and by the end you will be floored. I was devastated by the end. I was crying. It was so good. Um, yeah, Chain Gang All-Stars by Nana Kwame Adige Brenna. Um, and this is out from Pantheon Books, so. This sounds like a great one. I haven't picked it up because it sounds so heavy. And <laughs> it's like, when are you in the mood for brutal, prison commentary <laughs> violence thing. Um, but I have heard the author speak. Um, he was in Charleston for the Charleston Charleston Book Festival. And he is a great speaker, such an interesting guy. He studied under George Saunders. 
Yeah. But I think you can see kind of that influence who both do similar things. So um, this sounds like an amazing book. I think he has probably still like Pulitzer National Book Award books in him. So I 100% too. I would not be surprised to see this book on the National Book Award long list at least because it is such a commentary on the American penal system. Um, but at the same time, I just was so surprised by the heart of it all. So that was yeah, that was amazing. So what's next on your list, Ryan? Okay, I went in a different direction. Um, this one is not super dark, uh, though it has a little bit of dark elements. It's Small Joys by Elvin James Mensa. Um, this is a UK author. It was published in the United States by Ballantine Press. Um, this book is about uh, Harley, who's a young man in 2005 in the UK, and he's just dropped out of university. Um, he's returned to his hometown, and he's lost. Uh, he uh, moves back in with his friend Chelsea, who uh, lets him rent a room from her. It's like her father's flat and he's um, just renting a room. And another guy has already moved in with Chelsea and his name is Muddy. And this book really follows Harley and Muddy and their relationship. Um, Harley is gay, black, um, you know, college bound, but lost. Muddy is this straight dude who likes birding and the band Oasis and rugby, and they couldn't be more different. But there's something about their relationship that is just so sweet and compelling and lovely that I just fell in love with this book. Um, it didn't go in directions that I expected it to. Um, it's not a romance. It's not a coming of age novel necessarily it it kind of falls in this middle space but i really appreciated that um this does have uh some elements of uh his father not treating him well because he's gay um he has a relationship with another man that is not great um but the lovely relationship between Harley and Muddy pulled me through this whole thing. I really liked it. So Ryan gave me this book for my birthday and I actually read it in two days. So I absolutely loved it. Muddy and Harley's relationship is fantastic. It deals with some mental health stuff, some self-harm things, <laughs> um, right. uh, topics and stuff like that as well. But in the end, it's a friendship novel between these two men, which we were talking about your first pick. It's like, we don't hear much about like this straight guy, gay guy, friendship sort of thing. That right. doesn't have that sense of like, uh, oh, I'm going to fall for him. You know what I mean? Like it stays, it stays true to that friendship and figuring out what it really means. And I thought that was really beautifully done. Yeah, it really was. Um, so I highly recommend it. If you're looking for a lighter novel that's still well-written, uh, check that one out. I don't think people have talked about it enough, and I hope more people read it. I agree. And I told Ra uh, Ryan to find a queer novel about birding is like right in your sweet spot. So I thought that was... <laughs> it's true. Very, very cute. So. It came along at the right time. <laughs> well, my next book is Yellow Face by R.F. Quang. This is out from Moro here in the U.S. I don't know who's published it in the U.K. But um, so Yellowface is the story of two authors who meet in uh, graduate school, June Hayward and Athena Liu. And they um, they do they sort of become friends by circumstance in college. Um, when they graduate, Athena becomes very, very accept, uh, successful. She's an Asian um, American writer. She writes from her own perspective. She's nominated for all of these awards and everything sort of going her way. June um, doesn't have the same success. She publishes one novel. It doesn't do very well. 
Um, and they sort of have this strange, weird friendship. I'm not sure Athena knows it's as awkward as June thinks it is, but in the very first pages, this is not a spoiler, Athena dies. And June is uh, dies in her own house with June there. And June takes Athena's latest manuscript that she has just finished and takes it with her after she has called the police and getting, gotten someone there to take care of her friend's body. So basically this book becomes about June taking over Athena's manuscript and publishing it as her own. Now the manuscript is about Chinese miners um, during a war. I can't remember the exact war in my head, I apologize, but it's very specific to Athena and who she was. <laughs> Um, and June decides to rewrite it. She even changes her name when she goes to publish it to Juniper, um, almost as if she's playing a game, right? And what the book does is it follows two things. When it follows June, basically lying to the world about this manuscript that goes on to do very, very well. But what it also does is during the publishing process, the publishers and the editors in June start to take more and more of the Asian cultural aspects of the novel out and beef up the white perspective. So you watch how this novel goes from a book about the, an Asian experience to a novel about the white view of an Asian experience. Well, there are people around that start to put these pieces together and things start to go awry for June. So she decides to um, make some choices that just lead her down not a great path. Let's just put it that way. Um, and she winds up thinking she's being haunted by the ghost of Athena. Wow. And the book is about publishing. The book is about that whole thing about getting your book out there. But it's also about sort of how dominantly white publishing is and how a lot of stories from different minority groups are often whitewashed to make sure that they are easier for different groups, for the white readers to read. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just so powerful. It is, you just can't believe what's going on, but it's so believable, if that makes sense. Um, but then you, you're like, June in her head as a character is constantly a, sort of creating excuses for what she's doing. And you're just like blown away by these decisions, but they get her the success she's always craved. So wow. it's really, it's like a weird sort of literary thriller in sort of a way, wondering if she'll ever be found out, but also watching as she sort of unravels as people sort of poke holes into her own story. So um, I loved it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So that's Yellow Face by R.F. Quang out from Morrow. That sounds really good. I love the cover, too. <laughs> yeah, the cover is, like, very stark different, right? I'd never seen anything like this. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, last but not least on your list. Okay, this is a book I've recently finished. Um, it came out in 2005. It's Wounded by Percival Everett. Um, Percival Everett wrote The Trees and Telephone. Both books were widely uh, lauded by different uh, awards. Um, this book is from Grey Wolf Press, and it's from a few years ago. Um, this book feels very much inspired by the death of Matthew Shepard in Wyoming back in, I think, 96, 97. I can't even remember the year now. Um, this is about um, a black rancher named John who raises horses in Wyoming. He has a ranch hand who's not very good, um, but he's like this lost kid that like John takes in. Um, and one day he doesn't show up for work and uh, he's been arrested because another young man has been killed for being gay out in the middle of Wyoming. And this starts the novel about 
you know, justice and dealing with these things and acceptance. And um, John, you know, is kind of apathetic at the beginning. He doesn't really care about this guy. Like, oh, it's another tragedy. Black people have been suffering these injustices for years. Um, like, there's no love of the sheriff and law enforcement, and there's no sugarcoating of what policing has done to the Black community. Um, but here, there's an unsolved murder about this kid. And then uh, there's a rally for the kid that died. And one of his old college friend's son comes out to visit. Um, and then the son gets involved, like, with the ranch and, and like, wants to come out and sit, spend a semester there. Um, and it's just an interesting novel about, you know, the different ways that people suffer and how it, like it's the same for so many people, so many marginalized communities to be treated this way. Um, and it's easy to overlook the community that's not your own. Oh, that's... you know, so um, like John, like doesn't have any bad feelings towards gay people, but allegedly doesn't know any gay people. And, you know, so he's not very affected. And then kind of this comes more to his doorstep, so to say. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was a really well-written book. I really like Percival Everett's writing. It's never, it's never what you think it will be. It's very readable. Um, this book is much more straightforward than some of his other ones that have a more supernatural, speculative kind of feel. Um, this one's really just a straightforward novel about this ranch hand dealing with these murders in in Wyoming. I always say Percival Everett for so long was like the writer's author, like all the writers I knew read Percival Everett, Everett, but he wasn't talked about. And then Telephone was shortlisted for the Pulitzer. The Trees was shortlisted for the Booker. Um, I think his book after that, Dr. No, I think that won the Kirkus Prize. Mm -hmm. And he has a new book coming out very soon too. So um, I'm really glad that you talked about him because I think more people need to read him. I think I need to read more of him. I've only read, I think, two of his books. And he's been writing for years. For years and has a lot of novels. And they're yes. all very different. Um, I think The Trees is one of the best novels ever. I really like Dr. No. I've read Telephone and I thought that was very good as well. And they're all so interesting and so thought-provoking but yet it has his stop the style of his and I find it just really readable because it's it's humorous and it's fast-paced they're not real long he's a, he's a great writer and does deserve more attention I agree I agree well my last book is actually a tiny tiny book and that is um, Wandering Souls by Cecile Pinn, and this is out from Holtz. Um, and this book was long listed for the Women's Prize this year. Um, this is a book that is one of those books, when I read it, I was like, oh, that was good. But then as it sort of sat with me, more and more of the story is sort of like infiltrated into my thoughts this year about reading. Um, this takes place, this is the story of three siblings in Vietnam. They're from a pretty large family. Um, the last of the American troops are about to leave Vietnam and the family has paid for the whole entire family to be extradited. But they're going to go, well, and I say extradited, they're going to go on a ship on a boat. They're gonna be smuggled out of the country basically. And they're going to um, wind up in Hong Kong, but they have to split. They can't all six of them go together. So the three children, the oldest daughter and her two younger brothers go, um, go first and they wind up in Hong Kong. Um, very soon thereafter, their parents are supposed to arrive and they never do. And we later find out that the ship they were on didn't make it. So the parents and their youngest sibling died. And so now all of a sudden, these three young kids are in Hong Kong in this refugee camp with nowhere to go and nothing to do. 
they did have they have an uncle in America, but um, they don't have any way of contacting him or getting anything information to him. So what winds up happening as they spend a few years in this refugee camp and then they get moved to the UK. They are not accepted by the United States where they think they're gonna go to try to find their uncle and they wind up getting moved to the UK. And it's about what happens when they get there. The daughter becomes the mother more or less. She winds up working in a factory. She winds up having to support her brothers. She tries to put them through school. Um, and one brother makes poor choices as far as choosing to get involved in some stuff that's not great. And the youngest brother wants to be really successful, but his control of English winds up getting in his way and he has to make different life decisions. And it's all about how this action to get out of Vietnam at the end of the occupation by America and what you do and how you become and sort of what choices do you have as an immigrant and in this one in the UK and how do you find happiness? And they make some, and they wind up do they wind up developing families and stuff. It for such a thin book, it travels many many decades, so you get to see how it all comes together. Um, but it's just really interesting about how this family and the decisions that are made when you're just trying to survive at a very young age, you're going to make decisions that are life lasting. And um, it's beautifully written. It's like very poetic. And I don't know that I've read a lot of stories like this um, about young people having to fight through this experience and the system and all of that. So I thought it was beautiful. And that's Wandering Souls by Cecile Pinn and that's out from Holt. That sounds great. <laughs> we did have a lot of happy reads this year, Ryan, so far. Everything we put, a little bit, a little bit on the darker, sadder side this time. Small Joys is probably the happiest, so maybe the best summer read. <laughs> maybe. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of romance, a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, fun books out there. I just haven't read them. <laughs> yes, but I would say that these six books are a hundred percent worth people's times. Um, I've read two of your three; they're fantastic. I want to read Wounded. It sounds amazing. So I hope everyone will pick up these books. And um, yeah, it's been a great reading year. I'm really excited to see how it ends, how the rest of the year goes. Me too. It'll be it great. It'll be here before we know it. That's true. Well, well, as always, Ryan, thank you for joining me for this little chat. And as I say to you all every time, if you are a new subscriber, thank you for coming along. Hopefully you'll stick around. Ryan and I get together. I talk about books. We talk about books together. Um, and if you're a return subscriber, thank you so much. And until next time, happy reading. And we'll talk to you later. Bye, everyone.